Hey, check out my second channel, Rogue Bros, where my friend Noah and I face off each other in obscure video game challenges. Link to the channel will be in the comments in the description. K thanks, bye. Hey everyone, G Scotty here. In this series, I try to get an hour of gameplay for every dollar spent on a certain game. So, with that in mind, is Loop Hero worth $1 an hour? Make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and let's check it out. Have you ever discovered something that no one else seems to know about or even care about, only for it to become something that you absolutely obsess over, and now you don't have anyone to talk about it and it's driving you mad because people just need to know about it, it's absolutely slept on, it's just, you just need someone to talk to about it? Oh, sick, I have a YouTube channel. Hi, guys! I was floored when I first saw a trailer of Loop Hero. It looked so unique, like some tower defense game. But everything you place, instead of, you know, helping you, will actually attack you and make your run so much harder. But you have to do it to summon the final boss and ultimately claim victory. Yeah, this game is incredibly unique, and so much deeper and more intricate than it might seem at first. But is all this lost in the gameplay? Is there 15 hours worth of quality entertainment that makes the 15 US dollar price tag worth it? Am I just yapping for yapping's sake? I guess we'll find out right now. Loop Hero is a roguelite strategy game developed by Four Quarters and released on March 4th, 2021. A powerful entity known as the Lich has dismantled the world, plunging it into a timeless loop and the people into a vast chaos of nothingness. All that one brave hero can do is take one step forward, which would ultimately and slowly reform the world, only to have it descend deeper into the darkness in hopes that the sun would soon rise again. The gameplay is actually pretty simple in execution. All you do is place cards down to set landscapes and various buildings on and around the loop, and after you build so much, you'll have to take on the boss of the level. That is, if you can last long enough to actually fight them. This premise is relatively straightforward, however, the true beauty of the game is its surprising amount of depth. Learning card combinations will be your saving grace. For example, the village card will heal you and give you quests to complete that will give you some nice loot. Neat, right? Well, something pretty cool can happen if you place a vampire mansion right next to one. The village will get overrun with ghouls and their master vampire. Uh-oh. But should you survive a few loops with these dudes, the village will transform and become prosperous without any monsters. You'll heal more and even get better rewards. Another example, if you place a forest card, you'll be able to set up the hero's base speed. However, if the forests are in the line of a storm temple's attacks, the force will catch on fire and now raise the hero's base attack instead. There's a ton of card combinations like that, and when you discover something new, it just scratches an itch in my brain. It's just ugh, it's so satisfying. Almost as satisfying as this sound effect. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. The gameplay feels so intuitive, even though it is a bit challenging. The phrase easy to learn, hard to master fits right at home with this one. And when I say hard to master, I mean this game is pretty darn difficult. If you're not careful, you'll have an incredibly hard time even making it through the first level. Luckily, like most roguelikes and roguelites, you won't have to worry about starting fresh each time you die. On your journey, you'll be collecting resources from accomplishing various tasks and defeating certain monsters, or a certain size group or literally anything this game is so unique when it comes to that kind of stuff. When you return to your camp, those resources can go towards making items that will give you buffs should you equip them, or permanent changes to the loop, or different cards you can bring with you on your adventure, etc, etc, a billion etc. You will not be in want for things to collect, let me tell you. When I first played Loop Hero, I was perfectly content not worrying too much about these camp upgrades but I very quickly realized just how vital they are for the whole experience. Trust me, should you play this game, prioritize your camp. It's easy to look at a game and say, oh, upgrades are a means to the end goal, and the end goal is defeating all the bosses, so let's go and defeat those said bosses. Loop Hero should not be approached this way. I mean, it is what I did for the first huge chunk of the game, and I still had a great time with it. But it wasn't until I started prioritizing finding the exact materials I needed to build something that would help me in the loop, that the game went from a, hey, this is a really fun game, to a, this game is a must play and an absolute banger. Now that I'm talking about all this, I will bring up the one thing that I view as a negative towards the game. Finding that exact material you're looking for can take a lot of guesswork. 
Unfortunately, the menus are pretty convoluted if you don't know what you're looking for already, and the tutorials can be very easily overlooked. So just be aware to pay attention as you play, otherwise you'll pretty easily get lost. Honestly, I can't recommend enough that you unlock the encyclopedia as quickly as you can. It's an absolute must-have. That being said, this game bleeds quality and style. Oh my gosh, the style! I am a huge fan of pixel art, and this game is just unreasonably good-looking. The spooky yet cozy art is such a vibe. And speaking of vibes, my lanta, this music goes so hard. I am a sucker for chiptune music. Y'all know that. But like, how can anyone not listen to the soundtrack and just absolutely bop your head? Or feel completely unnerved. Or even enter a state of nirvana. This is one of those flawless soundtracks that you guys just have to listen to for yourself. So yeah, Loop Hero might not be without its faults, but man alive, those faults are so small in comparison to what this game gets gold stars in. Gameplay, style, music, and lore, it, yeah, this game is stupid packed with lore, it's kind of unreal. Loop Hero is masterfully crafted and hopelessly addictive. I can quit whenever I want. I just, you know, don't want to. I believe that we can find a personal message within any experience, including playing video games. With that being said, what did Loop Hero teach me? You know, it can honestly be really discouraging to have a task or an objective in front of you that you have to conquer. It could be something as monumental as, you know, finishing school or getting that job that you want. Or it could be something seemingly small yet daunting, like running that errand that you keep putting off, or even just, you know, getting out of bed. We all have different mountains we need to climb, and honestly, no matter how seemingly minuscule or daunting it may be, it's still a mountain. How will we conquer it? What do we do when we finally hit the top? And what about the next mountain we'll have to climb? I don't really have any universally correct answers to those questions. However, what I've come to learn, and what this game really nailed home for me, is that the best way to reach your goal is one step at a time. There will be days where the goals we want to reach are incredibly easy to get, while others seem to have insurmountable challenges that you get nowhere close to accomplishing. Don't be so hard on yourself. All you have to do, no matter the size of the task, is take it one bit at a time. Who knows? Maybe you'll have to switch things up a bit in your approach. Maybe you just need to hang up and try again later. The only way you really can't get any closer to your goal is by not moving at all. Just take one more step, and then another and then another, until eventually, you'll conquer your mountain. Loop Hero is one of the most creative and addictive indie games I have ever played. No, scratch that, it's, it's just one of the most creative and addictive games I have ever played, period. The game has a lot of surprising depth, which gives it a lot of staying power, and a great deal of strategy that makes you feel like an all-star once it finally clicks. You can tell that a lot of love and passion went into this game. Four Quarters did an absolutely phenomenal job with everything. The art, the music, the rhythm of the gameplay, Loop Hero is the whole package. Alright, well, this is where I gotta make a confession. I kind of fell in love with this game pretty dang hard. I actually bought this game on Steam, and Nintendo Switch. Yeah, I, I bought it twice. <laughs> I love the feel of the Steam Edition, but that portability that the Switch offers is just so good. And across both editions, I have over 60 hours in this game. 60! And I'm still nowhere close to being done with the main campaign on either one. This is a $15 game. Talk about a lot of meat on the bones, sheesh. A lot of people ask me what games they should pick up and play, and this is one that I always try to mention. I feel like there isn't really enough conversation around this gym, and I want that to change. If you get the opportunity, do yourself a favor and pick up this title. 
you'll be playing it on loop. I am so sorry for that. So, what's the final verdict? Is Loop Hero worth $1 an hour? Yes, and give me DLC. A massive thank you to all of you who are members of the channel, especially the biggest patron of the month, my pal Johnny Appleseed. If you want to support the channel and gain access to cool perks like exclusive videos, stream VODs, and more, click the join button to learn how. Love, peace, and chicken grease. Bye bye